All he had to do was sit on that third base, and he just wins the game. And he's still doing a lot of damage for the counterattacks. If we look at the mute account, it is actually a uh, 13 to 6 advantage for Nurcio, plus that third base is going down. And a big drone advantage for Nurcio as well, plus additional queen, so he's not going to die to any kind of counterattacks or desperation moves. Uh, I think Nurcio has now probably secured this, because he is definitely the better player. I don't see him making the same kind of dumb mistakes that Alistair has been making to let Nurcio back into it. That was a little yeah, crazy. I think I think from this point, Nurcio just kind of secures it and moves on and wins. I think he has finally gotten it to that point where he can do that. Yeah, Alistair's not really getting anywhere with this at this point, having lost that third base and not made anything. Right? It's just that it, it's actually almost frustrating. Actually, not almost frustrating. It's extremely frustrating to watch a gold base completely undefended from those kind of air attacks. Even one or two spores would have completely turned those fights around consistently. They do so much damage now against Muters. He didn't build any. And unfortunately, it seems like his stubbornness has cost him this game. He is far behind in supply now. The meter count is 19 to 12, and the gold base is now being secured by Nurcio as well. As you said, this game was very, very silly, and it shouldn't have gone this way. And yeah, best part is he had a gold base in ZBZ. Like, it's not a matchup where minerals are at a priority. It would cost him absolutely nothing to just put down a support crawler, and it would have made such a big difference here. Well, there's the GG. Nurcio basically handed a, a bit of a charity win, I think, there. He, yes, yes, he was. It's not a case that Nurcio didn't deserve the win. It's more of a case that Alistair didn't he deserve to lose, but he did it anyway. Yeah, Nurcio certainly played it better. Uh, he definitely earned that win, but I don't know. He was just behind enough from the start. Uh, Alistair got away with a lot. He got a slightly better end of the Ling Bane trades. Nurcio's main lane control wasn't particularly good during that phase of the game, but his, his play with Immutus was just much, much superior. Such a strange game, all things considered. I'm also not sure why they both insist on taking the gold bases. Maybe I'm just missing something. I haven't played a whole lot in CBZ on the map, but it seems unnecessarily risky, like, by a lot. They were both so exposed to the Mutalist attacks, and it's not much safer versus Zerglings, if at all. And the gold base really doesn't help too much in CBZ. You need gas, not minerals. Um, huh. You barely ever saturate your third base anyway. Well, that was strange. Okay, well, Alastor did take a map, so that's good. And he brought out Nurcio. So now I think you've surely got to throw Vortex at Nurcio. I would think so. I don't. I would not have any confidence at all in Majestic to beat him, unless they send Majestic in with some silly cheese, like he actually has four gates or something like that. Possibly. He's Protoss, he might. They may have a plan for that. Actually, but... there, may, there may be something to be said for that, because I don't see... I, I, I see Vortex as having a pretty good chance to beat Mana. Like, he, he made one really bad decision in the game versus Titan, and other than that, he was doing okay despite not being in great position. So, I don't know. Vortex definitely has the best chance to get some mana. Maybe you don't want to risk Vortex on Nurgio if you don't have to. I could see that being the rationale. So maybe if they have a good build prepared for Majestic. Uh, we'll find out, won't we? Nurgio. Uh, they're going to throw Vortex at him. Okay. That makes the most sense, in my opinion, honestly. Just uh, throw, throw a good level player in there. And then that leaves Majestic as a possibility if Vortex loses to Mana, and then you do, you can throw a PvP at Mana, which is definitely not his best matchup. No. Uh, one way or the other, if if they can't beat Nurcio, they can't win. And no. Nurcio's the one who's going to be really hard to beat, I believe. Yeah, I and think if Vortex Nurcio... doesn't beat him, Nurcio just Probably kills not. them all. Simple as that. And Nurcio did almost lose to Alistair. Like, he, he definitely should have lost that game. So. Yeah. Vortex is certainly going to be better than Alistair, you have to imagine. Uh, certainly I certainly hope so. I think if Vortex saw that game, he goes very, very aggressive with Ling Bane early on. Uh, I believe Nurcio's muta control is far superior to his Ling Bane Ling play, just from watching that game. It looked pretty apparent that he was wasting a lot of Bane Lings, but his muta play was quite solid and intelligent. So, I, I don't know. Especially because Vortex is a player who's pretty good with the early game aggression. He's, he's a very dynamic player. He's completely capable of throwing that kind of thing in there. I think he ought to go for that. Gives him the best chance to win here. All right. Well, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, folks, we'll be bringing you Vortex versus Nurture on his EBC. It's going to be on Yonsu. So there we go. Spain versus Poland. One of these guys will go home. One will go on to face Norway in the loser's final for a chance to go on to day three. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Nation Wars, brought to you by O Gaming, Daily Motion, and Numerical. And we're going into the next game right here, which is going to be on Yonsu, and this will be between Vortex and Nurcio. This is uh, going to be, let's just say, a little more high level and probably a little less mistake prone. I would imagine so. I would certainly hope so. Alistair absolutely should have won that game. But yes. to be fair, he absolutely should have lost the game before, so it's kind of only fair. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, certainly. There's a there's a tiny little pixie that's giving him these wins, but also giving him the losses because he's a malicious little pixie. But never mind. That was a really weird game. Everyone was confused. Nurcio in the lobby actually said that game was awful, and I I mean I hard, I find it hard pressed even trying to be positive to disagree with that because <laughs> really Alistair had that in the bag, and he was really stubborn and kind of refused to do the sensible things. It's almost like he saw the win. And then pulled a Scarlet with uh, versus SOS, if you recall correctly, where she saw the win, got stars in her eyes, and just went right for it. Pretty much the same position. Mm -hmm. And he just he threw it away, which was really unfortunate, because I think he could have had that. Yeah, absolutely. Just attacking... He had a gold base against... He had three bases with a gold base against two bases with no gold base. And then he continues to try to attack into Queens with his Mutas. Which is absolutely I... terrible. <sighs> Build spore crawlers. Just or just don't attack. I mean that works as well. Yeah, so. just not attacking would have been enough, probably. Yeah. Like, spore crawlers is the hundred percent win. Not attacking is the ninety percent win. I just like I mean, to watch spore crawlers in CBZ. I like watching yeah. muters die and those seem to be the things that kill them the fastest, so it works for me. They kill them really, really fast. Especially in low mute accounts, because Nurtio is never over like fifteen for the first three fourths of the game. So he would have been absolutely nothing he could have done against the spore crawler. You yep. secure that base, and you win. Well, never mind. Let's see if Vortex can uh, pull something out of the bag here. He's very strong in this matchup, but he is against this guy. To the southwest position, considered uh, for the longest time to be the strongest Polish player in the Blue Trunks playing Zerg. For Team Poland, it is Asa Nurcio. His opponent to the northeast position in the Red Trunks playing Zerg for Team Spain who one would have thought would have been able to carry his team in the previous series, but failed to do so. So let's see if he's warmed up now and he's ready to rock and roll. It's Mouse Sports Vortex. Mirror builds out of both of them yep. so far. Sli slight, slight variations, but pull first, quick gas, and then a hatchery. So very standard. And this seems to be what Nurcio does every single game. I'm pretty sure it's what he's done both the previous EVZs. And Vortex, we didn't get to see him play as EVZ just yet, so I'm not sure exactly what he prefers. But absolute mirrors thus far, both with two Zerglings meeting in the middle of the map. A little bit of a micro battle going on, which Vortex won kind of as long as he gets away. He killed one, he didn't lose one. So yep. he can go home and regen and take that 25 mineral victory with him. Indeed. <laughs> well, Nurture is not going to be able to get He wants it, but he's not getting it, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's It's just not going to happen. It's the worst thing. Oh, no, he get, oh the regen kicks in. Never mind. And interestingly, Nurcio has actually taken drones off gas. He's going to be doing a speedling, at least attack, if not all in. But we have an immediate baneling nest coming out from Vortex. Timing on this is going to be really, really close. Um, actually, not close at all. He doesn't have any Zerglings coming out. So even if he's going to have two Zerglings. And speedling is going to finish faster for Nurcio. So it wasn't exactly the build build order. So I just kind of assumed it was close it enough like to not it. matter. But Nurcio actually got gas and speedling much quicker as he was aiming for a speedling all in here. Back at home, Vortex Vortex smells something. He's making a couple extra Zerglings, but no spine crawler yet. He's saving up Larva, so he can make extra Zerglings if he needs to. And he sees the attack coming, he knows he needs to. The Baneling Nest has not completed just yet. It's about 50 HP away. He's going to clean block the hat, the ramp and make Banelings behind. 
Well, that's going to be some drones, so they, they will be able to mineral walk through the queen, so he's able to save a few of them. That resulted in two dying, but he is looking to try and take that out, and it looks like he might be able to have the DPS red. The lings are about to pop out, but it's in red health right now. 300 going down to 200. The micro's looking pretty good right here for Nurcio. He takes out the hatchery. Very nice. Took out a drone, took out a hatchery, forced four quick banelings, a lot of Zergling production. So that was a big, big win for him, as long as he doesn't die here. Because there are banelings on the way, and he does not have his own banelings now. That can be pretty risky, especially with a lot more Zergling streaming across the map from Vortex. But Vortex doesn't have another larvae check going, so this is the last big wave he has. He needs to do significant damage and really just break Nurtio here. Yeah, Spine's about to be done, but it's not quite up yet. So Vortex still has a chance, and a connection comes in. A good one here, right here for Vortex. There is only a single Baneling left. It does go off. The surround comes in. Nurtio's queen is going down here as well. And uh, the lengs come in from Nurtio to clean up the rest. So that looked good, but it didn't really do enough. Those were good Baneling connections, but really smart play from Nurtio. He actually ran his existing Zerglings around, just kept them in the back, kept them safe until the Banelings exploded, and then was able to come in and clean up afterwards. As I said, uh, Vortex didn't have a Larva Inject going, so he wasn't able to reinforce that attack. And Nurtio actually going here. Nurtio's Ling vs. Baneling control has not really been on point thus far today. He's taken a lot of really bad explosions. But this game, the, the just the choice to do that attack early on, that secured him a pretty big lead. Look at the harvester count. He's up by a lot. Uh, yep. Nine, <laughs> nine. Eight, nine varying amounts, and as long as well as the earlier hatchery. Yep. He did lose that queen early on. That's that's, that's less hurting optimal, him a bit, but it's yeah. okay. He, he has a very solid advantage going into the mid game here. He also has access to a baneling nest now, so with this attack coming shouldn't do anything. But he's not morphing banelings for some reason. Well, right, there, there we go. go. He's more of them at the ramp, however. Vortex may have a chance to get in there and do a little bit of damage before that happens. Runs in a single link just to keep an eye on say, hey, do you have any banelings? Well, he went up the ramp. I'm not actually sure if he went up the ramp or if the corpse just got flung up the ramp. But <laughs> I don't think he actually went up the ramp there. The spine crawler threw it across half the screen, which, as entertaining as that is, is actually surprisingly annoying because I now have no idea if he saw the banes. But it doesn't matter because Nurcio is moving out with a second attack that has been spotted by Vortex's overlord. Nice and easy here. A lot of banelings, huge amounts of them, 10 to 6. Admittedly, Unless his control is very, very good. It's actually now 10 to 5. That was fantastic there from Nurture to take one of those and a bit of a slip up from Vortex. It can still get cancelled out. You know, a small numbers of Banelings can kill large numbers of Banelings, but we'll see how the engagement goes in. That's going to be a trade. And right, run into the face right there. Maybe not so good. Roaches pop out at just the right time to shut this Baneling attack down. That did not go well for Nurture. No, it didn't, but he had some idea that this might be happening. He actually already has two spine crawlers back at home. And this is relatively low econ from Vortex. He only has the one gas mining. He's not going to have a lot of roaches or a lot of banelings here. So this is defensible for Nurtio, but it's going to be tough. There's not enough roaches that he can just power through those two spine crawlers right away. So the additional four or five that he's building will kick in pretty quickly. And I believe it'll be in time. I, I think Nurtio is capable of holding this. I think so. Yeah, he's got a lot of spines. He's got a queen transfer as well. A couple of banelings moving in and a decent number of lings. And it looks like Vortex was not able to get any good baneling connections there. There's actually a ton of banelings here for Nurtio, which is a little strange considering he's using them against roaches. That will not be so efficient. But the spines are done now. So I don't really see this doing anything. Vortex is going to be driven back by the looks of it. And Nurture getting extremely aggressive with his banelings. Doesn't really need to do that. The spines and the queens and the lings should be more than enough to deal with this. Yeah, and Nurture actually has his own Roche production on the way now. Plus he's up a good nine harvesters. Better Ooh. production. Wow. Oh, a lot of banelings used there, but the it did there. the job. There's the GG. And... Nurcio buries Vortex pretty quickly here, and this is not looking good for Spain. No, that, that was unfortunate. Vortex knew something was up, too. He was saving Larva for the Zerglings early on. He got his Banelings just as quickly as he could. It's really a really good decision-making on Nurcio's part to just go for the hatchery, not try and bust the ramp, not try and make anything that couldn't happen happen. Just go straight for the hatchery, knowing he had the DPS to take it down. Really smart from him. And then from there on out, it was a very, very uphill battle for Vortex. Losing the hatchery early on is... It's pretty game ending. I think so. And this could very well be the end of Spain because Nurcio's sitting there and he's saying, come at me, Majestic, because that's all you've got left. <laughs> Vortex didn't really do the job at all. It was... I wouldn't say... I mean, it was a bit back and forth, but that early attack, as you pointed out, really did a lot of damage. It was a very, very well-planned out attack from Nurcio. It absolutely delivered. The fact that he even got out of there with some of his lings made the defense afterwards much, much easier. Everything played out the way it should have for Nurcio. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, he clearly had a plan all the way through. He was prepared for everything, even uh, the roaches. He had a second spine crawler in coming up before he had any kind of scouting information. I'm not sure if that's a habit of Vortex's. Any kind of low econ situation, he tends to go for roach busts. If he's just a fan of roach busts in general, if Nurtio was just paranoid because of the previous game against Targa or whatever. But uh, whatever happened, he had some kind of read there. Put up that second spine crawler completely blind. Um, even though he was already investing in a Ling Bane rush, which, or a big Ling Bane Ling attack, which makes it even even more impressive just because it doesn't really fit in with his game plan at that point. He was going aggressive while also putting up defensive countermeasures. So, nice impressive play from him. And Vortex, once again, looking pretty lackluster. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's, it's a problem with Vortex. In the last couple of years that I've watched him play, he has off days, and when he has off days, he really has off days. Uh, he's not one of the he never plays average in any tournament yeah. i've seen either he he rips it up he takes some koreans out he dominates foreigners he uh, finishes really really well or he just bombs uh, and there's really no in between and unfortunately today it wasn't his day it happens that's not and unfortunately leaving leaving spain's hopes on the back of majestic doesn't seem too too bright of a future for them I don't know. Maybe maybe the PvP before was just nerves. Maybe but it was just a bad decision to go for the two two gateway stalker thing in that situation. Mm -hmm. Does not make me very optimistic about his chances here against someone the caliber of Nurcio. Yeah, I mean, Nurcio is a guy that has had top finishes. Nurcio is the guy that has actually won major tournaments. So to suggest that Majestic would be able to take him out. It's a tall order. It can be done. It is just a best of one. We should bear that in mind. So we're not talking about Nurcio playing a best of seven series, which he'd win 99% of the time. We are talking about a best of one against a Protoss that could go either way. It's going to be on Frost. That's that's interesting. I would have figured he chose something. He'd choose something like... Actually, I guess Yunsu and Polar Knight are both already out of the pool. They've both already been played. So that takes out the two very aggressive maps. I was kind of just figuring he would go for like a gateway expansion into a four gate into an immortal all in or some kind of very powerful, very simple cheese. But on a big four player map like Frost, that becomes much less effective. Um, you have to get much more into the realm of tricky cheeses. Uh, at, at the very least, you have to hide pylon placements and whatnot. You can't actually just protect them and straight up do a rush. Everything has to be a surprise or be hidden, be unusual. I don't know, maybe he does something like a weird DT all in or a weird DT rush. Because he definitely has to do something. He can't just play a macro game with Nurcio. I don't know enough about him, but I'm almost positive he's not going to be on the same same par as Nurcio. Yeah, I think so. This is a tall order. Again, a possibility for Majestic to actually make it work. And I think if he does take out Nurcio, he's got a good shot at mana. But as you said, last PvP was pretty diabolical. So we don't really know whether or not that was just nerves or whether he's just genuinely not very good at that matchup. Yeah, that, that was just a decision-making kind of thing. But decision-making is all PvP is. It all comes down to the mind games early on. I mean, there, there's a bit beyond that, but it's very much so... Uh, I don't know, Protoss just isn't very hard to execute. So it's very much so, especially between two Protoss players, comes down to your decision-making, your build orders, and choosing when to engage, how to fight, and whatnot. Certainly. Just very lackluster there. It's a shame. But, before he even has to worry about that, he has to get through Nurcio, and that is not going to be easy on this map. Although I haven't seen Nurcio as EVP in a long, long time. I don't know. He always used to be very Roach and Fester heavy back in Wings of Liberty. I don't feel like that style is particularly good with the Hots and Festers, but I have not seen him play. Actually, I don't know if I've seen him play a single CVP in Heart of the Swarm. All right, well, let's see how he does. So, the last hope of Spain. The one man standing between them and elimination to the southeast position of Frost. In the blue trunks playing Protoss, it is Majestic. Versus his opponent to the southwest position. In the red trunks, having already taken two wins, looking for the all kill here for his team of Poland. It is Asa Nurcio. Majestic opening up with a pylon in his main. That would suggest it, it can still be a Nexus down on, like, without just the forge in your main, a Nexus on the low ground. That can happen, but it's more likely a gateway expansion, which opens up that early aggression that I really feel Majestic needs to take advantage of. Oh, he's not putting down a gateway just yet. Yeah, he is rallying his probe out, so he should be dropping a gateway with that. There we go. 13 gateway. Okay. Not a super early gateway. And now the big thing to look for is if he is just going to go super cheese, if he is just going to go one gas gateway expansion into four gate zealot, because that kind of thing, 
uh, especially against someone like Nurcio, because Nurcio, he's a very, I, in every matchup, uh, even used to be in ZVT. I think he's gone to hash first in ZVT, but he used to be even in ZVT. He would go pull first every game just because he wanted to be safe early on. He felt like that was the best opening. And pull first has a really, really, really hard time holding off the very strong zealot rushes just because you don't get speedling in time and you don't have the economy to back up roaches or a third base. So if Majestic is really smart and knows Nurcio really, really well, I think that would be a great build choice for him to make. Actually just drop the Nexus here and go straight up for four gateway. But that's the kind of build, and he actually hasn't gotten a gas yet, so I guess that won't be happening. But, yeah, I don't know what he's going to be doing. But he just went gateway expansion with no gas or no cyber core, which is a pretty unusual build, honestly. Generally, people either want the very fast uh, expansion off of Nexus first, or they want the very fast tech and aggression capabilities of a just gateway and then a quick cyber core and then a Nexus. So this is a weird middle ground build that not too many people are fond of. Yeah, it is a little strange. But the thing is, I suppose we don't really know what to expect from Majestic. We saw so little of him. Mm -hmm. he, got, he got to play one game where he just got trounced by a four gate. So we've learned nothing of his style. You're right, though. The Cyber Core is definitely a little bit later. And it's a little bit unusual. But this it just makes me think that Nurcio might just want to play safe here because he doesn't really know Majestic too well either. And he's actually going to get up another hatchery here. And most likely just try and make sure that no shenanigans are going on. Yeah, we do see a second gas coming down from Majestic. It's a little bit on the late end, but it, there is a second gas there, so it won't be an immediate warp gate rush. And he actually walls off immediately, so Majestic or so Nurcio isn't going to get to see what exactly he's doing. He does see the forge, however, and the forge kind of tells you that you're pretty safe early on as Zerg. You're not going to have to worry about too much. And some nice little Zergling control from. Oh, he's actually. Oh, going to get in. His, oh, That's and nice. he didn't even wall it off, so that was. Pretty poor play from Majestic there. Nurcio's going to get full scouting information. He actually, he really wants to kill that probe, or that pylon, and it should happen. Yeah, well, why not? Might as well. Actually, no. With the, with Mothership, Mothership calls out. out. Oh, no, he's got, he's got the DPS. Does he have the DPS? Ah! Well, that's galling. 12 HP left, and Nurcio didn't actually get any scouting information. He didn't head into the main. He didn't check if there was anything there. The Forge tells you that your opponent's playing a little bit safer, that you don't have to worry about anything killing you immediately. So there's a bit of information there, but still getting into the main is nice. Um, yeah. Because Majestic could have had a Stargate or a Twilight Council down if he was really cutting corners. Yep, he's building a Stargate now, but you're right. I mean, it's it's annoying even as just a spectator not to see that pylon die. It seems like Nurcio earned that pylon, but <laughs> at the end of the day, he wasn't quite quick enough. He did get a probe, which is pretty cool. And he did, I suppose, force his opponent to panic a little bit, but didn't really do too much difference. It would have been nice if those lings had actually made their way in. I think he really wants that pylon. He's sending some more lings over, but that's actually <laughs> not a good idea, I don't think. Not with the Mothership uh, Core there. And the shields are already backed up to 130, so it's going to take a little bit of pounding for that to actually go down. Pylon's clearly imbalanced. Obviously. Here come the lings. He wants it. He's, he's attack. He's actually targeting it. He wants it. He's pissed. <laughs> This, this could be unfortunate. You might want to watch out for doing that. Now, actually, he will be able to take that out. The Mothership Core DPS, as I keep for consistently forgetting, is absolutely awful. So he's even able to pylon block his opponent. He is working on another one. Photon Overcharge forced out on five lings. Nurcio with the mind games here. And he was actually forced to build an extra three pylons there. Uh, he did end up canceling them, but that's still 75 minerals down the train. Burning the Photon Overcharge. And Overcharge in that uh, Mothership Core mana. That's the supply block, block is, is here. Yeah, the supply block is actually preventing his Phoenix production from beginning, which is a pretty big deal. Majestic is dropping a pylon out in the middle of the map, so it looks like he's probably going to harass a bit with Phoenix and then go into a warp gate all in. But eight roaches already on the way out. I think the eight roaches might just kill him if Nurcio sends them, because he has no ground. Uh, he has a single Zealot and a single Sentry, and he doesn't have any mana on the Mothership Core for another yeah. Photon Overcharge. That's not going to be done for a little while. He'll be able to... I think he should be able to use that Photon Overcharge by the time the Roaches get there, though. Uh, it'll be close. The Roaches are already out on the way here. He's also got to be careful not to send that Mothership Core too far out, because then if it has to walk back, it's going to be terrible for him. Sees the Roaches, and... Wow, I mean, this, this Mothership Core is only just going to get back in time by the looks of it. 
And even if he does cast the Photon Overcharge, Nurtio just runs his 7-8 roaches back and is completely content, because it's a very, very small investment. He kind of wants to have them to help defend anyway. And... He doesn't. He, he wants doesn't actually have Photon there. Overcharge just yet. No, he does not. Uh, and a couple of roaches get in there. Unfortunately, Nurtio is not able to kill off that sentry, which I think was what he was looking for there. Focusing on another sentry is... Oh, is he gonna, I don't think he's going to get either of them, actually, so... No, he gets one, so that seems like it was worthwhile. These roaches getting a little bit beat up at the front, thanks to the phone and overcharge and everything else, but another pylon actually ends, goes down and shuts down the forge, shuts down the cyber core. That doesn't really make much difference, because they're not actually researching anything right now, but it does shut the cannon down as well. There is actually a 36-link follow-up, so... Hmm. Well, there, I think he exchanged like three very expendable roaches for a sentry, a pylon, uh, a bunch of mana on... He, he cast four force fields there, he had a photon overcharge, he had to do a bunch of graviton beams. Yeah. So that was very, very effective for Nurtio there. And now this counter-harassment by Majestic is just accomplishing absolutely nothing. It may be no, it's not doing anything. Yeah, and good. we already have Hydras on the way with Void Rays coming out from Majestic, so that third base is definitely not going to survive. And Majestic might just actually die to the Hydra attack. Very well might. Oh. Never mind, he's going to pick up the pylon. doesn't want to take any risks here. He doesn't want another run by to come in, but that's a lot of Zerg and not a lot of Protoss. Now, where is that Mothership Core and how much energy does it have? It has absolutely bugger all. It's sitting on 50 and it might even be forced to use something like a Time Warp instead of that. Double Force Field goes down doing absolutely nothing. And now Nurcio baits those two force fields out and then moves right around and is going to try and crack his way through here. Force field goes down. Majestic does not miss that one. However, all the other units do get surrounded. So we're going to see a lot of dead sentries here by the looks of it. Although the Zealots actually acquitted themselves very well there with that plus one upgrade. So, in fact, Majestic does save his sentries. Yeah, he didn't actually lose a single sentry there. Uh, very nice. Quite impressively and surprisingly. And he has established his third base to an extent. He will have Photon Overcharge pretty shortly if he doesn't have it already. Uh, with a cannon there, and those existing units, plus the fact that Hydras are very, very squishy, of course. Uh, he has secured the third base for the time being. Oh and he might actually be able to kill all these units if Nurtio isn't careful. Yeah, Nurtio actually allowed those Hydras to get out of there, so it looks like, unless Majestic, well, Majestic apparently does, there we go, he's going to chase that Hydra down. No, too late. He could have got that Hydra and taken three for free, which would have been wonderful, but that didn't end up happening, and... Well, Nochio's performance here has been a little shaky. I mean, it, early on, it looked like he was just toying with his opponent. It looks like his control was just worlds away from Majestic. But he's made a couple of slip-ups here, and I it has resulted in Majestic getting a little, well, sort of getting back into it. I honestly think he was just toying with him. It looks like he was playing really cocky. He kind of felt like he could just attack with anything, and he would win the game. And now it's getting a little bit scary, because he's going very Hydra-heavy, and uh, the first boss is... is essentially completed at this point. Thermal Lance is on the way. One Colossus with really good force fields will be enough to keep him alive here.